This is the fifth generation Lexus RX, an iconic luxury crossover, considered the first luxury crossover on the market, coming out in 1998. The RX is known for its luxury, for its styling, for its interior, and its quality, all at a pretty reasonable price considering it's a luxury crossover. With that, let's see how the new fifth generation stacks up to those expectations. Let's get into the review. All right, let's quickly talk about the range offered here on the RX. You do have the RX, the RX Hybrid, and an RX Plug-in Hybrid. Trims include the RX 350H, the 350H Premium, the 350H Premium Plus, the 350H Luxury. Then you have the 450H Plus Luxury, and then the 500H F Sport, which is what we have right here. So all of the 350Hs are their basic hybrid engine. The 450H Plus is the plug-in hybrid variant, and this one, the 500H, is a hybrid, but also the F Sport, so it's got more power. Looking at this new exterior, obviously the first thing that stands out should be this color. It is called Copper Crescent. It is a pinkish color, not quite rose gold, but it is a copperish color definitely stands out definitely gets noticed probably not everybody's cup of tea i quite like it though our headlamps are the by led headlamps with that signature lexus swoosh in the headlamp as the daytime running light you do have led fog lights here you can see the new bold hood coming into this new nose and this is represented on all the new lexus crossovers what used to be the front spindle grill is now a more 3d designed grill evolving into lexus's new design element that they call the spindle body the grill is smaller and less pointed than before and i am glad that they are evolving the style they had the spindle grill style for probably a little too long the a pillars on this crossover are pushed back to emphasize the elongated hood giving it a more sporty look we do have 21 inch alloy wheels here they are dark finished alloy wheels for the f sport you can see the f sport badge here on the front fender our side mirrors are power folding on lock and heated and also have the turn signal integrated you can see the unique profile with that belt line and what looks to be continuous glass towards the back in the rear we do have led taillights with a lot of design in there we have a simple rx 500h badge with a direct four badge under that that refers to the all-wheel drive system in this lexus and then of course that lexus badge even though this is a sporty crossover there is no visible exhaust ports here because it is also a hybrid looking at the size of the vehicle it maintains the overall length of the previous generation while the wheelbase has grown and has a wider body your full length is 192.5 inches the wheelbase is 112.2 inches it has a 75.6 inch width and a 67.3 inch height all right with that let's pop the hatch take a look at the cargo volume before we jump inside you can kick underneath to pop that hatch obviously there is a uh, button on the key fob and a button inside to pop the hatch and first off the lexus rx is now exclusively a five passenger crossover there is no rxl which was introduced a few years ago and quite frankly was a bit too small for a three row crossover anyways we've got a couple of reviews on the rxl as a parent of four kids that needs a three row crossover or i do own a minivan my conclusion with the rxl was that it was a bit too small and not really usable as a three row crossover so it's nice to see that they just kind of scrapped that all together if you do want a three row crossover that's not the uh, big lx they now have the all new tx trim which we've looked at and talked about a couple of times already and joked about uh, being the texas garage trim specifically made for me hopefully we'll get to review that one soon but for now we're looking at the rx and again it's exclusively a five passenger crossover 
which means you do get a lot of cargo volume back here behind that second row. It does have 29.6 cubic feet of cargo volume behind the second row. You can fold it down and get close to 50 cubic feet of cargo volume, but that's a ton of space, plenty to throw some chairs that we have back here and stuff for kids' soccer, uh, different activities, plenty for golf clubs, luggage if you're traveling, whatever you need. With that, let's go ahead and close it up Go up to the front, pop the hood, and check out the engine. All right, let's quickly talk about the engine here. It is pretty special because it is the F Sport. It is the 2.4 liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine. Just like many manufacturers, there's no V6 offered in the RX. It is all turbocharged, low displacement engines, which is perfectly fine as long as it all works well, which we'll talk about as we drive it. This does push 366 total horsepower with that hybrid system and 340 pound-feet of torque. Has that direct four all-wheel drive that we talked about. And this one does have the towing package on it that allows it to tow up to 3,500 pounds, which isn't a ton, but plenty for light trailers, small boat, jet skis. And we'll talk more about the engine and how it feels as we take it for a drive. But before we can do that, let's go ahead and check out the interior and the tech right now. All right, we're here in the back seats of the RX and they're really spacious to start off with. Again, you don't have to make room for a third row, so you have plenty of room here. There is no back and forth adjustment, but you don't need it. You got plenty of room here. You can see where the passenger seat is. This is pushed back because when you turn the car off, it pushes the seat back to give the driver an easier way to get out. But this is more represented of where the uh, driving position is. And again, plenty of foot room, plenty of knee room. I have plenty of headroom also. I'm 6'1" bit of a bigger guy and I fit back here just fine. If you're carrying four adults in this, no problem. We carried two adults and three kids in the back row. That again, also no problem. You do have the pull down armrest with some cubby space, with some cup holders. You have your own USB-C charging ports. Heated and cold seats are back here. You can adjust your AC controls. You got your own vents back here. And just like the front seats, very nice materials, which we'll get into as we jump inside the front, which we should do now because the uh, driver position is the best. All right, guys, here in the driver's seat and uh, it's a really nice place to be, especially with these F Sport seats. Do you have the F Sport logo here in the headrest? They are perforated. They have suede in them. That's really nice and grippy. Heated and cooled seats, power adjustable. The door trimming is really nice as well. And don't know how well it's gonna show up in the video, but this is kind of a suede material with some design patterns in it as well. And this is really nice. And all the materials in this vehicle, from the dash to the center console to the headliner, all very nice materials, which you might expect from Lexus, but isn't always the case. Let's go ahead and kick it on and start looking at the tech and the rest of the interior. It is push button start. I do like the placement of this push button, as I've said in the last couple Lexus videos that I've done. I reviewed recently the RZ, which is the all electric kind of version of the RX, and I've reviewed the NX, which is the smaller version. And a lot of the interior bits are very similar to those vehicles, but I'm still gonna give you a good breakdown of everything. So again, let's kick it on. And you just grab back here, push with your thumb. Things start to come to life. And one of the big things to notice is this big screen. It is a 14 inch display. The standard RX comes with an eight inch display, but this thing is really big in here and works pretty well. It might seem smaller than it actually is because you do have a lot of controls down here, this part of the touch screen, 
controls right here, part of the touch screen, and then the rest of your screen kind of right here. My one gripe about the system is it doesn't seem like Lexus takes complete advantage of all the room that they have. And some of the features are a little bit more cramped than I would like them, which I've discussed with uh, other Lexus reviews recently. But other than that, it is a pretty good system and way better than the previous generation. This also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available. I can plug in my phone and you'll see the Apple CarPlay icon pop up here that we can tap. And now we're in Apple CarPlay and you can see it works well horizontally and you still have all your other controls plastered down here including your heated and cold seats and your heated steering wheel option under that are your vents you have two buttons here one for your parking assist and one for your cameras push that and you can see a full 360 view and you can toggle through some views obviously if you put it into reverse you do get the reverse camera and a full 360 view here and it does do the cool trick as you back up of showing you what's underneath the car. And then below that you have two USB-C charging ports here, and these are just for charging. And then you have another two ports, one's USB-C, one's USB-A. This one is for interfacing with your infotainment system. You have to have USB-A for that. This one is for charging only which is a USB-C. So it's pretty interesting why they chose this uh, route, but that is the way that it is. We also have a wireless charging pad down here that will wirelessly charge your phone. Coming back, we have our gear shifter, same gear shifter that you've got in the other two Lexus crossovers that I've driven. It's just a small shift by wire. Push it over and up is reverse that we got our reverse camera on. Push over and you'll get it in neutral, over and back is your drive, and then back again is your manual shifting modes. Push in for park. You have a traction control button here, an auto hold button, a terrain management button that basically is just a off-road toggle, and then your electronic parking brake right here. Obviously cup holders, again, nice materials, nice look here in the console. The armrest is, Decently squishy, nice material, opens from the side here and is a decent size. Can open from either side, which is cool. Moving back to the steering wheel, it is a power adjusting steering wheel. So you just have a knob here that adjusts. It's a nice little bit beefy steering wheel, good grooves in it. You can see the paddle shifters here, all your controls on the steering wheel, the F Sport badge. You've got a sensor arrangement here that's shooting lasers in your face. You can't see these visibly, even though you can see them on the camera, but it's making sure that you're paying attention to the road, which we'll talk about as we drive it. Then you've got your hatch pop, your fuel door pop, seat memory, your instrument cluster brightness and odometer trip toggle right here. The other thing I'll talk about that I don't always touch on on vehicles is the door handles. We did talk about this on our other Lexus crossover reviews but this is a little bit uh, unique and does trip up people when they first get in this car. So you have to grab it, push your hand and thumb right here and you just push and push and it opens the door. You can pull out like this and that will also open the door. It tricks people up sometimes because if you just push it in and then try to push the door open, it doesn't work and then it doesn't work very well. You've really just got to like push it, hold it and push the door and it works fine. Back to the steering wheel. Behind the steering wheel is our driver information screen. It is a full LCD panel. It can be toggled through to see a little bit of different information. As you might have saw on the screen here, we do have drive modes that you can switch it into from normal to sport and eco. And as you change those, the driver information screen does change a bit we also do have the panoramic sunroof that opens up and then obviously the uh, actual sunroof here for the driver and passenger 
But yeah, I think that's a good rundown of the interior and the tech here. Let's go ahead and get it out on the road, talk about the drive, the hybrid power plant, the drive modes, the fuel economy. And then after that, we'll wrap it up with some of the price and some of my final thoughts. Let's just keep on going. All right, so let's get it in gear. Like I said, there are different drive modes. We're just starting off in our normal drive mode, which is basically what I've driven this thing in all week. I haven't really put it into eco mode. I've only put it into sport mode a couple of times just to feel it. But I really wanted to drive this just as I would a daily driver. And in daily driving scenarios, you just drive it in the normal mode and it works out well. And of course, speaking of fuel economy, this one, the F Sport, which probably has the worst economy out of all of them is 27 miles per gallon city. 28 highway and 27 combined. If you're looking at the plug-in hybrid, you can get up to 83 MPGE. During our full week of driving this thing, we're averaging about 25.6 miles to the gallon. And again, that's in normal mode pretty much all week, not putting it in eco mode. But if you do put it in eco mode, you can tell it deadens the throttle a lot. You've got a little bit more aggressive, like regenerative braking. It puts you in EV mode more aggressively, which is all great things if you're really trying to get the most out of the economy of this thing. You can do that, but 25.6 for the full week of just having it in normal mode, I'll accept that as a good number. Putting it into sport mode, you can tell that that EV mode goes away. The engine is always running. Throttle response, more immediate sounds a little bit better <laughs> and it can get up and go zero to 60 time for this is rated at 5.9 seconds and that's the fastest uh rx that you can get obviously being the f sport this is the sporty one if you want a sporty vehicle we'll check out that uh, zero to 60 in just a bit but let's put it back into normal mode quietens back down a little bit more comfortable on the suspension road noise wind noise in this is very low there is a little bit of road noise wind noise is almost non-existent but uh definitely fits into what you would expect from a luxury crossover you do have that all-wheel drive system and as you saw, we do have a kind of terrain management button that puts you into an off-road mode. I personally haven't taken this thing off-road. I imagine it will be decent, but not great. If you're looking for more off-road, there are definitely better vehicles for that, especially just ground clearance wise. But we did have this during rainstorms, kind of that standard Texas flash flooding. And there's never a situation that I thought that the uh, tires were gonna slip out from under me or I didn't have traction. It all worked really well. This does have the Lexus Safety Sense 3.0, which is the latest version of the Lexus Safety Sense. Previous generation would have been like 2.5 or something like that. Uh, there are a lot of new features and a lot of beefed up <laughs> version of older features. So you've got the radar guided cruise control, the lane keeping assist, you've got radars all around the vehicle. You've got the cross traffic alerts. You've got that 360 camera. You also have a feature in the system that can be turned on that will give you sort of the radar cruise control feature without even having the radar cruise control on. So if you're going down the highway and you lift from the gas and there's a vehicle in front of you that's slowing down, this vehicle will slow you down to kind of match their speed. First couple times I felt it happen, I thought it was like the regenerative braking really kicking in, but it is the vehicle actually slowing you down because of the radars and the vehicle in front of you slowing down. You can turn it off, but it's a nice feature and it didn't really bother me at all. I actually got used to it and liked it, but that's just a good example of some of the extra safety that you get from the 3.0 system, which is definitely a plus here. Let's put it back into that sport mode. Let's uh, feel how it goes around some corners and then we'll do a quick zero to 60. <laughs> There's a little bit of body roll, not terrible. Definitely has good power good braking 
little bit of lag, but once it gets going, it's going. Steering feel really good. Pedals feel really good. Seating position is really good for a driver. I didn't take it on any longer trips this week, but uh, the time that I did spend in it, the driving position is really comfortable. <laughs> and when you want to have fun with it, it's easy to do so. <laughs> All right, we're on a back closed off road, so let's go ahead and hit that zero to 60 and see how this thing feels. Dead stop, sport mode, ready, set, go. A little bit of tire squeal. 60. <laughs> and we'll have to see what that is in the edit, but felt pretty quick. And again, noise is good. There's definitely something about being in this uh, pinkish copper luxury crossover and just smashing on the gas and uh, having that sound, having that acceleration, I'd give it a thumbs up. Would you? Hit the thumbs up button. Another thing you do have on this is the big head up display. Nice and sharp, lots of information, including all your safety information. It also does a trick where you hover your fingers over the buttons on the steering wheel and it will show you uh, what that button is so you don't have to look down if you're not familiar with it quite yet Which is a really great feature. I think and was on the uh, previous two Lexus crossovers that I drove as well. So Really liking that Lexus is doing that and with all of that fun out of the way, let's uh, pull back over We'll talk about the price and I'll give you some of my final thoughts and let you know if I think this is still worth buying in 2024 with the fifth generation. There's still a little bit to discuss, so let's get into it right now. All right, guys, after all that, let's talk about the price. And as I said in the intro, the RX has always been more of a reasonably priced luxury crossover. But for that, they did make some sacrifices on the interior, and I don't think they've done that here. The interior is super up to date. How long it stays up to date is up to Lexus, but for right now, super up to date, nice interior. Of course, this is the top of the line trim. To get into the base trim, the 350H, your base MSRP is just over $52,000, which I think is a good price for this thing. I would like to drive that base trim and see what I think. This one, the 500H F Sport, has a base MSRP of just over 62,000, so another 10 grand on top of the base. But our full MSRP of what we have here with the custom paint and a bit of extras plus destination charge is just over $72,000, which gets you into a range where you can get a lot of different uh, vehicles, but probably not top of the line trims of luxury crossovers. With that, let's go ahead and jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts on it if I still recommend it. If I've got any lingering flaws on it, we'll discuss it right now. Let's go. All right, so at the end of the week, after all that we just talked about during this review, uh, my final thoughts on the RX, the all new fifth generation. I still like it a lot. It's a great looking vehicle. The tech in it is better than it's ever been. The interiors are better than they've ever been. It's got to still be reliable. It is Toyota based, Lexus based, and they're just reliable vehicles. I think it drives fantastic for what it is. I would love to get in a trim that wasn't the F Sport top of the line. It's probably not what I would be buying if I was actually buying one because at that price point there are a ton of other crossovers and vehicles that uh, kind of start coming into play. But at the 50, 55, even into the low 60 range, this is a very compelling buy in my opinion. So I definitely give it a thumbs up with the caveat of if you think you're getting this exact vehicle, it's really gonna depend on your budget. But if you do have the budget for it, it's a fantastic vehicle. With all that said, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button for me. I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the RX, the all new generation, the style, the interior. Let me know if there's something that I missed out that you wanted to know about. I might be able to answer it in the comments below. If you're into automotive reviews, 
Subscribe to the channel. We do a different review every week. Always appreciate new subscribers. You should also go check out TXGarage.com where we've got a lot of written reviews as well as event news coverage over there from a lot of great authors, not just myself there. We have a weekly newsletter. We've got merch. We've got all kinds of stuff over there worth checking out if you're, again, into the whole automotive enthusiast, automotive review scene. And it's a great way to support the channel and us doing more cool stuff. With that, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching.